Hey guys, so now the weather's warming up. We're heading into spring. I'd like to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about safety. You know, some of the a motorcycle is inherently more less safe than a car, no matter what you're going to do. But there are some things you can do to, to bring your odds of an accident down closer to that of a car. A lot of accidents on motorcycles occur at intersections, either intersections like this, you get out in there and somebody's running a red light, or cars pulling out in front of you, cars trying to get onto the road and either not seeing you or not judging your distance very well. So you really got to watch the cars, the people, their, their body language, their car's body language. Try and get an idea of what they're going to do. And don't just go blaring through an intersection without paying attention. Watching cars that are coming, turning onto the road. Yeah, you can't depend on their signal lights. They may be signaling right and they just change your mind at the last second and it's hard to turn left. So intersections are a big problem. The other problem that you run into with motorcycles is taking corners. The motorcycle, the rider misjudges the corner, misjudges their speed, and they overshoot the corner. You know, two of the things that are very, very useful, or actually three things that are very, very useful in the advanced motorcycle class is cornering, emergency stop, and counter steering. Those three things can really drop your, your chance of having an accident down to closer to a car. Um, I saw a motorcyclist earlier today when I was working. He was zipping in and out of cars at, you know, 65 miles an hour on the freeway. Very dangerous. Knowing how to take corners, how to adjust, if you, if you get a little bit off on the corner, knowing how to adjust. You know, because you cannot just if you're in a corner, in the middle of the corner, you cannot just slam on the brakes. You might be able to lightly tap the brakes, possibly, depending on where you're at in the corner, how far you're leaned over. But you've got to be real careful on the corners. You got to know when you can use brakes, when you can't use brakes and how to adjust yourself in that corner. Now, the more upright the bike is, the more control you've got, and the more traction you've got. So when you're in a corner, you use your body as a counterweight to help keep the bike more vertical. It gives you a little more tighter corning, corner turning radius. You actually lean your body into the corner and that throws the motorcycle a little bit more vertical gives you a little bit tighter turning radius a little bit better control that's why you see these guys on the track they're leaning their whole body in there and they're touch almost with their knee almost touching the road so they want to keep that bike more vertical gives them better traction gives them better control. And then emergency stopping is another thing that you need to know how to do. If you have ABS brakes, this thing has K ABS brakes and the KX system. So if I was to slam on the front brakes, they won't lock up and it also engages the back brake. 
But on a lot of other motorcycles, if you don't have the ABS brakes or you don't have the KX system, you have to practice making the quickest stop you can without locking up the, tail, the wheels. And it takes some practice. Because it's when you lock up the wheels and start sliding, you lose control. You want to stop as quickly as you can without sliding. And of course the other thing is counter steering. Counter steering is something that is real hard to get used to. But if you ride down the road and you just grip the handlebars loosely, you push on one push on the left, push on the excuse me. If you push on the right side, the motorcycle will go to the right. If you push on the left, it will go to the left. It's a little bit counterintuitive. But what it's doing is actually tipping the bike and leaning into that direction. So, and of course, following too close, I see that an awful lot with motorcycles, where they're, they're following the car too close that they cannot stop if they had to. And they're going to get themselves in deep shit. If you're following too close and that car in front of you suddenly slams on the brakes, you're up a creek. And of course, that goes for whether you're on a motorcycle or a car, but you're more of an upper crick with a motorcycle. So, allow enough space to stop. And you need to be familiar with your motorcycle and how far you're going to need to stop for a given speed. That just takes some experience with the motorcycle. And until you have that experience with your motorcycle, with that particular motorcycle, you need to take it a little more easy. Allow a little more room. Counter steering for, you know, quickly maneuvering around something uh, can be very useful. You need to get out into a parking lot or somewhere where you can kind of practice it and get used to how it works. You don't want to try, you got to be careful with it out on the main road. Do it at slow speeds first to get used to, you know, what it does. You need to find an empty parking lot somewhere where you can do some practicing. And of course the freeway. Following too close, somebody following you too close. Somebody changing lanes and bumping into you. It doesn't take much of a bump for you to be up a creek. So you really got to watch the traffic around you. Don't follow too close. Pay attention to the traffic up ahead. You see a whole bunch of taillights all of a sudden coming on. Brake lights coming on. Be prepared to stop or slow day down. Watch people coming up beside you. Make sure they're in their lane. Be real careful when you're changing lanes because some of these cars are coming through at uh, some incredible speeds. I've seen a lot of traveling 70 miles an hour down the freeway and you go to change lanes there's another guy next to you, you know, going 120 and cruising right by 
And if you're not watching close, that's an accident waiting to happen. And that's Never assume that the other driver knows what they're doing. I know there's a whole train of thought on, you know, lane position. Um, most of the time I really don't pay a lot of attention to to it. Um, I do pay attention to lane position to if there's if I think there might be a visibility problem for either me to be able to see or for the other drivers to be able to see me. Um, especially if you got a a smaller bike not as visible as this. We don't have a lot of lights on it. You need to make yourself more visible. Wearing lighter gear. Something to make yourself a little more visible. Also, if I'm in the middle of heavy traffic, sometimes I'll drop the gear down a little bit and run at a little higher RPM so that I have more uh, maneuvering capability so that I can get on it if I have to. So I have a little more control. If I'm in a higher, if I'm in a, a lower gear that's running at a higher RPM, I've got a little more ability to, uh, to give it some throttle and if I back off it's going to slow down a little bit faster just from the throttle. And we're probably going to have to go use HOV lane. That's why I brought the bike. So I was going to cruise a little faster, but speed limit's 60 through here, so we'll just kind of take it easy, keep it around 65 or so. Don't want to get going too fast. Can't afford a ticket. Ah, uh, the narrow bridge. This side is the old bridge, the other side is the new bridge. This one has grates between the lanes, so you're not supposed to change lanes on the bridge. And especially with a motorcycle, I wouldn't recommend it. You can do it, but those grates are enough of a problem. Okay, I'm getting going a little bit faster. I don't know what happened at the top. He must have pulled off somewhere. <laughs> 